Call of Duty. The most popular game in the world. With high speed intense action gameplay. And the most mature and hardcore gaming community. Golden gun, I'm getting my first golden gun. Wow, that was so funny. Oh my god. No, 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 Well, yes, it seems that once again, this year, like every year, Activision and all their friends with Call of Duty come around to collect all the money from all the 12-year-olds to, t uh, like, 35-year-olds, actually. And now, Activision has come around to show us a little teaser trailer of what might happen with Black Ops 4 and, you know, everything they're gonna try and do, and that's a complete lie. They maybe showed us, like, five clips from the old games, and then they were just like, Black Ops 4, here, go nut yourself. We learned as much from this trailer as we did from the Smash trailer, and honestly, we even learned from the Smash trailer a little bit more. Like the fact that apparently some people believe that Sans will actually be in fucking Smash. And to go on a small rant for about two seconds about that, why would a company like Nintendo look at a game like Undertale by a mildly rich indie producer go, yes, that has a spot in our million dollar game, multi-million dollar game, because this, this little fuck stick deserves a spot, definitely. But back to Blops 4, and for those of you who don't know about Call of Duty, it is a yearly thing and it has been for like almost 20 years now. Call of Duty is an actually pretty old series and I don't think some people know that actually. Call of Duty has always been super popular, but really hit that extra stride when Modern Warfare 1 came out all those years ago. And rightfully so, that game was an absolute masterpiece as far as the multiplayer, the campaign, and everything they actually put into that game had a lot of work going into it. And then, when Modern Warfare 2 came out, that blew it even more out of the water, and apparently so much so that they're gonna remaster that one as well. And oh boy, am I ready for that shit to go down. I can confidently say that World at War was the next biggest stride after that, but this is a video talking about Black Ops, and in a way, Black Ops is technically the follow-up to World at War as far as the time frame and how everything was set up. In my opinion, I feel that World at War brought a lot to the table and definitely set a ton up for all Call of Duty games to come, but I definitely feel that Black Ops 1, when it came out, really took all the best ideas from the originals in World at War and then took it to that next level by adding the whole Vietnam era, adding the major serious storyline that Black Ops has always carried through with it and even intensified the zombie mode and turned it into the absolute masterpiece that it is today. I love Black Ops Zombies so much, I even had a segment in a Knockout Wolf video about it, and I, I mean, it's just, it's such a fun mode. You can fuck around with your friends, you can just get to as high of a round as you want, and then you can just start all over and play it a bunch of different ways, and it never really gets boring unless you're just playing one map all the time, which some people do. It's fine by them. Seems kind of weird seeing that there's all these other maps, but anyways, that's not my point. And the other thing that Black Ops 1 really improved upon from World at War and other previous COD games is that they really brought the multiplayer setup to a whole nother level. They added a lot more attachments to the guns, like the flamethrower and the shotgun and a whole bunch of other shit, and they just, you know, kind of improved on the game mechanics and how the matches were set up, and, you know, they were just really working on making the perfect Call of Duty, and I, <laughs> I think it's probably one of the top five. And then Black Ops 2 came out. When Black Ops 2 came out, it was an almost instantaneous success. I mean, I can't think of one person that I knew that wasn't playing Black Ops 2 at the time that it came out. And once again, with this game, they took what was working in the previous games and they expanded upon it even more with the storyline and fighting Raul Menendez, or I don't, I don't remember his name, but I remember he's an evil fucking dude. They brought the zombies to a whole nother level with adding maps like Buried and one of my personal favorites, Mob of the Dead, where you can play as Ray Liotta mowing down zombies with a Tommy gun. I mean, who the fuck doesn't want to do that? And uh, for those of you who don't know, Ray Liotta was in B-Movie and Goodfellas. Those are the only films I can remember him from. But without a doubt, the highlight of Black Ops 2 was most certainly the multiplayer aspect of the game. With Black Ops 2 making that further push into the future, it opened up a lot of spaces for, you know, new weapons and new technical gear and new score streaks to come in 
and it just made for one of the most intense multiplayer experiences that Call of Duty's ever have. I mean, everybody was uploading to YouTube, and everyone was trying to quick scope and make trick shot montages, and everybody was trying to get into FaZe Clan at the time, and it just blew Call of Duty sales up like tenfold more than any other had before. Overall, it was a solid game that I still have on my Xbox to this day. And of course, there's the world-renowned Black Ops 3 to follow that up. <laughs> Now, of course, when Black Ops 3 came out, people were obviously hyped for it, and, you know, everybody was really excited, but there was definitely a lot of skepticism on the game when it first came out because, you know, it was following up Advanced Warfare, and, you know, that game sucked. But even with that, Black Ops 3 still came out really solid and had a great following and still does have a great following. I hop on there every few days or so just to, you know, play a few matches with the jump pack and things like that with other stuff that obviously couldn't be in a game like Call of Duty World War II or probably any to follow if they continue to go back in time. Black Ops 3 also had the Zombies Chronicle series, which you had to pay $30 extra for even if you bought the season pass, but it was a series of remastered maps from the old zombie games that they brought to the new generation. And for 30 bucks, I feel like everything that you get in the content is really worth it, but I do feel that the price should have been lowered. And honestly, there's not really much else to say about Black Ops 3. It was well-rounded and it brought everything together from the previous Black Ops as every game did before, and it added an even more futuristic aspect to it, which I thought made it a solid game and that brings us to today with black ops 4 coming out on october 12th and the reveal will be on may 12th but so far we've had had a few cool leaks and reveals and things like that that have come out to the public such as the logo and i still don't fucking understand why they did that instead of the actual roman numeral i mean maybe they were trying to be edgy and cool with this like hey guys it's like the other two it's just four now and it kind of does look cool but at the same time it just kind of looks like somebody didn't know their roman numerals a good positive that's come out about Black Ops 4, though, is that they say that the game will be far more grounded than the previous games where, you know, it was like a lot of jumping around and a super high tech stuff like that. So a more grounded experience does leave a lot of, you know, open questions to ask. But I do think that it will be a solid experience because of this. I'm not really going to go too deep into the trailer that came out because, like I said, it's just a series of clips from the old games, you know, closing in with the storyline pieces and the zombies bits and bits from the multiplayer. But that was really it. It didn't tell us anything about Black Ops 4 at all, but we just have to wait till May to learn more about it. And maybe I'll have another video out then if the trailer's actually interesting. But there was one thing that came out that people connect to Black Ops 4 that I do find highly interesting and highly enjoyable as well. A little while ago, an update came out for Black Ops 3 and it added a new multiplayer map, which was just basically a frozen version of Redwood, which is my second favorite map. I don't like falling off of there, but that's not the point. It's a frozen, completely snowy version of that, and a lot of people think that there's going to be a more arctic feel to Black Ops 4 or there's going to be some sort of connection between this map and the game in some way. But honestly, I've just been enjoying the map and I kind of hope that it is connected to Black Ops 4. But overall, we will just have to wait and see when we learn more what more we can find out. But again, Modern Warfare 2 is uh, being remastered and put out again, so uh, I think that's a little bit more important to me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you enjoyed, you know, the little differences in it. And if you did, please leave a like. It would help out a lot. Subscribe if you guys are new. Comment down below if you have some shit to say. Share this channel if you think somebody else would enjoy the content. And I will see you guys all next time. I'm the same damn way that you left me. Sex on my mind and my heart is fucking empty. I went out with the gang. I was flexing. Got drunk and I started to regret things. I'm alone, can't go home, lost my phone. Oh